What we're trying to do is we're trying to figure out how we go from where we are, which is that we have finally achieved compelling virtual reality, something that can give you a, a, an experience that is not like anything that happens in the real world, to where that could go, which is something that truly completely immerses you, that gives you whatever experience you want with all your senses. And that's a long, long way off. I mean, we're talking about looking ahead for decades of new challenges. If we're running as many hardware experiments as we can, we're building the prototypes and we're seeing what works. It is important to realize that virtual reality isn't just a platform, it's kind of the substrate that anything can happen on. I want to be able to put on the headset, sit down, and actually have a virtual workspace. Instead of saying, wow, I can afford this big monitor, I want to say, I can have 100 monitors, I can put up a movie screen, I can make a hologram, I can do whatever I want, and I can have multiple workspaces flipped between them. Um, then other people can teleport in and I can interact with those people. So they can look over my shoulder, we can sit and we can work, we can write on a virtual whiteboard. If I could do that, if I could work in a virtual workspace that let me be with anyone anytime I wanted, that let me be wherever I wanted, have all the resources, that would be as much of a jump as it was when I went from basically a typewriter and pen and paper up to having a computer. When you think about it that way, you say, really, this is the human experience taken to the limit. We are trying to build intelligent computer systems that uh, have you know, the ability to understand the world around them, to understand text, to understand uh, language, to understand you know, visual scenes, to understand speech. They've made a lot of strides in computer vision. Five years ago, computer vision was nowhere near human level performance uh, for most tasks. And now with deep neural networks, it's actually exceeding human level performance in some narrow domains of computer vision. And that's a really transformative thing. Like computers can now see, they didn't used to be able to see. Show me a pathology slide and tell me where the pieces of it that are, are tumorous, uh, where we can actually have a model that performs better than a pathologist at that task. We are just at the beginning, but we are at the beginning finally, and that's the important point. If you ask me, well, where will virtual reality go? I would refer you back to my first personal computer which had 56K of RAM, but it was enough so that I could start doing useful, productive work. It was the beginning of that long, long ramp. But you know, today we are over a third of a century later and things are still improving, right? So I think that virtual reality is going to be very similar, which is that for decades, it is going to keep getting better and better. And we're finally on that ramp that is going to cause that to happen. If you were to choose to start a career in virtual reality today, the day you retired, you could still be working in virtual reality and the challenges would be just as interesting. They would just be much farther down the road. It is true that uh, computers are becoming more powerful. That's ultimately going to be very beneficial, but it's going to be somewhat disruptive. So I think it's important for you know government policymakers to be uh, understanding what is happening in this, this domain to be thinking thoughtfully about what should, should happen. Um, but ultimately, every time society has come up with a new kind of technology that can do something better, uh, that's been a net positive for society. We've sort of been able to use that to do more.